Hi, and uh, welcome to the Handstand Factory podcast. Um, again, a solo episode uh, only with me because I am still in Turkey and it is still a little bit too tricky to make the uh, actual conversations between me and Emmett run properly uh, through uh, internet that is not exactly stable here at the moment. So it is what it is. Um, Today, I was thinking to talk a little bit about teaching and why I started moving into teaching, kind of my, how to say, transition from being only a full-time performer into um, becoming interested in, in teaching and kind of the, how to say, the skills that I've attained along the way that I felt has kind of helped me facilitate teaching uh, and so on, and just a little bit of reflections and thoughts around that. So... Um, when it comes to teaching itself as kind of a concept, of course, teaching relates directly to learning. And I think if you listen to this podcast, you're probably interested in learning in, in some aspect or other. And I guess most people are, but of course, some in, like to intellectualize more over the idea of learning and so on than others do. Some like to just intuitively try things and learn them. But... I think it's pretty safe to say that yeah, learning is, uh, in general, a very healthy thing, of course, for your neurology and your brain and all of that, and also for your character and your uh, self-development and whatnot. It's um, definitely a part of what uh, allows you to experience new things. And um, I guess, first of all, I was interested in that. I was interested in learning things and like understanding how I could approach things. Uh, and I guess that kind of came to me through the the kind of teenage years when I started doing karate, doing breakdancing and stuff, where I suddenly saw that, okay, there is, it, it's possible to learn these things that I previously thought that was like not for me or that wouldn't fit my body or like all these kind of general limiting beliefs that is simple to build up through the years. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think that as I started to like really experience that, hey, I can actually do something about this and I can get good at something. I think that's what kind of sparked it. Like if I look really far back um, and like I'm also just as a kind of a tangent, I really despise those sorts of uh, <laughs> how to say uh the get rich quick uh, ideas of just like you just need to get rid of your limiting beliefs and then everything is fine it's not like that like if you want some sort of uh, real depth understanding of how you relate to these things then well you need to experience and that experience and experience them and it's likely going to take you quite a lot a lot of time at least from my experience to to learn about yourself in terms of how you how you perceive and learn things the best and you might need to try a bunch of different things all of that like regular old crap not being too afraid of failure but then again being like being super having a large hubris is not going to help you either so you need to kind of strike a balance between that i think but yeah looking at those things kind of and like how i was learning um i got increasingly interested in like how how just the learning worked in general like kind of extrapolating that into some sort of wider format and then being then able to apply that uh and teach others so uh, I think my first teaching experience was in karate when I was maybe 16 or so. Uh, and there was a shortage on high higher degrees <clears throat> or higher graduate graduated uh, people in my karate club in my tiny hometown. And the teachers basically asked me if I could kind of be a replacement teacher or a kind of like a teacher if, if in case they didn't come because they saw that I was there notoriously and I would always kind of be practicing. Um, so I started teaching then uh, a little bit, of course. It was very limited. I would just basically uh, uh, repeat the, the same vocabulary that we had been taught and so on. So it wasn't really... Uh, I wasn't adding much to the mix. But then again, I was 16 and I was very happy to, to be able to try this and like to 
to gain the um, how to say the the trust of uh, of leading the group, and it worked out reasonably well. Um, and I enjoyed being in that position. And of course, like being in that position is like okay, you are leading a and facilitating a sort of a a an activity an activity, and you need to know what's going on and what you're trying to achieve. You can't really try to. Uh, over or like step outside of the boundaries of the level of knowledge you have and so on but it was it was interesting to at least be able to try and experience it and looking at how I later got more into actual teaching um, on kind of a professional level uh, I think this has had quite a lot of um, impact in sense be simply because like I was exposed to it on an early age from kind of a very simple format, which then got more and more uh, complicated and more and more kind of uh, geared towards my specific interests as they developed um, as I became an adult. And also when I was, I'd been doing breaking for a bunch of years and I was teaching a little bit of, uh, I like basically my job when I lived in Oslo, uh, for the last couple of years when I was there was just being a breaking teacher for kids. Um, when I worked for this small dance school that had courses for um, kids around Oslo, like <clears throat> basically connected to the various schools and like after school activity, I would go there and they were would be signed up and we would have classes. So I've taught a lot of kids through the years uh, and like also connected to that. I was teaching at this one culture house, a pretty large one in Oslo where like I also got to teach like a little bit of just basic acrobatics and stuff because they needed an extra kind of quote unquote circus teacher, even though I didn't know anything about circus at that point. Um, but basically what they needed was a person that was good at controlling crowds of kids. And I had become decent at that over those years of, uh, of teaching kids uh, because it can be quite chaotic and it's a very different uh, methodology and a very different uh, frame of thinking that you need to be in when you teach kids, of course. Um, since at least what I found to be quite effective when teaching kids was making it more into games, making it more into kind of like simpler and shorter chunks of, of uh, information, no real intellectualizing, um, and making it accessible so that everyone could get to do some stuff, making it into a game, and making it reasonably fast-paced so that you don't have a couple of them that run off and climb up the walls and go all kinds of crazy. So uh, I think that also had like a good impact on too, like, or just giving me more kind of experience in the bag for for teaching. And yeah, fast forward some years, finished circus school, or even like middle of circus school was the first time I taught a workshop in Finland. I was in 2010. Uh, I was invited over there to teach a handstand workshop. Uh, and I put together something because I had never really done a workshop before. But through the years in circus school, when I had been uh, under my coach Sasha there for a couple of years, I got, I had been getting more and more interested just in like how he was teaching, how I would kind of approach the same things and seeing kind of uh, both the strengths of being in kind of a circus school setting and this, that type of training uh, protocol, but also the kind of uh, things that I had identified as weaknesses in terms of basically you're only teaching a sample size of people that are already extremely talented and like has high quality uh, training before or that have like like everyone has like on average exceptionally qualified uh, bodies for their disciplines because they have been chosen through the through the audition process and so on and um uh yeah like i when i taught my first workshop it was it's interesting because I just mashed together a bunch of things that I was interested in at the time and some of it worked, some of it I have kind of gotten rid of over the years, of course. And uh, my, I think my methodology and like what we've done with Handstand Factory and stuff has, has like really changed this. And But but the aspects are, are a lot of the same stuff. And um, of course, it is handstands and 
even though Hans, as we talk about a lot in, on this podcast, like there is no like ultimate way of doing anything. There are slightly different approaches and so on. But in the end, like it's it's Hans Dan, it's all rather uniform. Like it's it all exists within a certain spectrum. You find very little effective training that is outside uh, of that specific spectrum if we're talking about like if you want to learn a kind of regular route of hand balancing uh straight one arms and so on like you're, you're you're not going to go and play handball to learn that like that is too far away you're not going to get anything from it again like more more similarly like you wouldn't go to to gymnastics classes either if your goal was to learn a one arm specifically uh, it would be closer on to the the thing that you wanted to do, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be exactly that, um, and so on and so on. So it's like it's a specific discipline, and most people teach. Yeah, I would say most of the same stuff, and I would argue that it's often uh, more about methodology that is different between people than the actual technique. Like that, there are most of the aspects are are rather similar, if not identical, in many cases. Not all, but there's there's quite a lot of, of similar stuff. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, through like I got more interested also in in just like the details of this discipline because I saw that like okay, hey, there's a lot of just nerdy tiny details in here. Started to look into all the anatomy and all of kind of how the the shoulders will function and like I went through just reading a bunch of information some which was good and some which was not exactly great when I look back at it uh, but uh, at least I started to get like a wider like understanding of like how how these um, or how it's relating to just uh, the body and how bodies are are not necessarily the same and I think like when like one of them or some of the most important uh things that happened to me as a teacher was basically like going out of the circus school bubble where i mean if you like of course not everyone can handstand super well or do a one arm in in like the circus school i was in or my class but most people ask him to go on her hands like they could comfortably get up they could like there was an ability level for most people that would make it so that if they would mess around enough, even like semi-seriously, they they might achieve like a decent level of, of handstand because of all of the other acrobatic practice and experience that they had. So stepping outside of that and seeing mm, that this isn't the case uh, among people that haven't trained this type of discipline, just as I would suck if I went into a maths class because I haven't done any mathematics. So... Um, when I yeah, when I was teaching my first few workshops, I did encounter a few problems, which I'm very grateful for happening. Basically, just seeing that oh, like these people uh, are not able to do a general just like they were they were climbing up the wall. I was showing stomach to wall handstand in my first workshop, and then they get to the top, uh, and some are not some didn't dare to go up, and they ask me, yeah, but how do you get out, get down if you fall over? And I just say, yeah, you twist down. And then, like, I just realized that twisting down means absolutely nothing to this person in front of me. And I needed to solve that. I needed to find ways of um, of handling these various situations, which had, to me, become rather blind. Like, I did not any longer see them as issues because I had not had, like, of course, I had experienced the problem of standing on my hands when I learned, but I hadn't experienced, like, a large degree of fear, for example, of falling over or I hadn't experienced like the feeling of not being able to carry my body weight because my arms were not strong enough to do so and so on. I hadn't experienced shoulders being like literally too tight for someone to do a kick up. Uh, so I started seeing these things and understood that, okay, well, you here we need to do some work. And here I needed to kind of figure out a lot of stuff, try out a lot of stuff and start developing kind of a, a framework for a methodology and like I, I back then I didn't of course call it a framework for a methodology at all that is words I'm using now like reflecting back onto it back then I was like oh shit I need to make sure that I can contribute something to these people that are coming to my workshops because they see me as some sort of authority on the field and I need to be able to help everyone and not just like the five out of 15 people that already have 
what's needed and then you tell the rest, the rest of the people to do push-ups or like okay yeah you need to do more wall handstands i wanted to have like more how to say more um intricate answers than so simply because like it's it gets very it, it's it's a frustrating and, and it's very uh can be a very confusing practice at first so i wanted to have better answers in general or better kind of approaches and yeah like as i was i was of course performing or like being in school and started performing and so on at the same time so uh and i still found that interesting and i still do um uh, but uh teaching kind of like i must say it it, it has become equally interesting and I think that one of the reasons why it's become equally interesting is, I mean, one which uh, might sound like I'm trying to be some like good Samaritan or anything here, but like, uh, I really think that first of all, it's just like there, like it. I think it's really fun to do handstands. I think it's it's an interesting practice, and it's something that gives me quite a lot as a person. And if someone else can do that as well and enjoy themselves with it, I think that's great. Like that is. That's basically the, the the first kind of um, stepping stone in for the entire thing. I think because yeah, you you find it interesting, I find it interesting. Cool. Well, then you learning this might uh, net you a bunch of interesting experiences with you uh, or with that. So that is kind of like the the the, the number one reason for for teaching and, and sharing a lot of different different stuff about this. Um, and of course, like it started to become a job, like it started to become something that I could start sustaining myself off of because like sustaining yourself as a full time performer is not easy. Um, and over like, I mean, it's fine in your 20s, but as long as you're starting also to get up in the in the years, like if you need to be on stage constantly to be able to make all your money, like it's going to get rough at some point or other. So moving all also or fully onto a teaching uh, kind of role is quite common within the circus within many different disciplines really but i wanted to combine this which made made it possible for me to uh, be able to both uh, perform because like then i can if i have an, another method of sustaining myself it means that it's it's literally more sustainable with the performing practice because i can take breaks when i would either want to or need to because there is another source of income that could uh be possible and one that does not require you to basically get a nine to five job where you are bound up in a specific place and for a specific time which is very hard to combine with with performing so for me that was kind of an ideal scenario um and um yeah when when, when looking at this entire thing of of um yeah sh the sh sharing knowledge and being able to yeah essentially teach of course there is this the the difficult balance between of course there's a lot of this stuff that you can you can find for free uh, out there there's a lot of this stuff that you can literally just go on youtube and you get really good tutorials and i'd say that there's quite a lot of very good stuff out there uh, we were talking about this on the podcast when we had yuri marmerstein uh, over um, and uh, <clears throat> that you you can you can literally learn it by spending like zero dollars on this entire process that is possible and i respect that and uh that is something that works very well for some uh maybe not as well for others and i think that's why it is good with kind of coaching and teaching alternatives because again people have different learning styles and <clears throat> it like the the fact that some people are obsessed and nerdy enough to go on YouTube and just basically find and trial and test things to and become really good without without any coaching uh like a lot of those people kind of like or from what I've seen kind of become very smug and go like hey yeah but you know I I am self-taught and check out how, how good I became and like well like you don't need to put other people down just because they'd like to to work with kind of a different type of of, uh, of approach and again this is this is just different like for me for example like i want to do some some like there's a couple of dance styles that i'd like to learn i'd like to go take classes i could probably get pretty good at at it just by looking at youtube and just like um 
uh, practicing through that, but it's it, it doesn't strike me as, as interesting as going to take some classes when I get back to Stockholm, for example, which I have planned on doing. So it it's just different, it, and it doesn't mean that you are a more glorious person just because you you chose to do it in a specific way that suited you. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's certainly interesting, and like of course with Handstand Factory, if I move more into that um, that entire realm, which is of course <laughs> why I'm sitting here like babbling into a microphone, um, like when we started out doing kind of our discussions around like what and how and why to do what to make this thing. Um, I guess it, it, it was between me and Emmett that we had, yeah, we had similar approaches. We had different approaches, but uh, I think the fact that like we still to this day find it interesting. And I think that is the most, uh, that's the most important thing to me. Like, if I was completely bored of teaching, if I was bored at like looking at fucking scapular muscles and how they relate to this and that, whatnot, if, if, if this was genuinely boring for me, I think I would struggle to keep my interest up and it would become basically something I'd do to make bank uh, and just try to ignore on my free time or uh, just try to not have in my life to as, as large of an extent as I do now. Um, and this is something also I think for kind of people that are teaching or want to teach. It's just like finding out one's like interest and commitment I think is very important in these uh, things because it's something that's going to take a long time getting good at. Like both learning it and teaching is going to take a long time if you want to do it well unless you just want to like copy paste what someone else has done. Uh, and if you copy paste what someone else has done you might earn some money, sure. But... Like, are you actually learning something as a person? I mean, I mean, to some people at least that is important, and that to me is something that I value. Um, so I wanted to do some of my own uh, approaches to things, but yeah, like finding out like what kind of commitment uh, you actually have to it. Like I often say, in terms of teaching, it's just like yeah, give yourself a few years of of being a practitioner. Like if you stick with this stuff for like five years, like be like genuinely having the interest then then you're like quite likely to to stick with it for a while longer and to find the teaching process interesting and that doesn't mean that like you need to like have cl clocked in five years before you start to teach not at all but uh it just says something about that i think it's important to yeah to to see if you actually care and I don't think you can know if you actually care just by kind of the initial kick of, of starting something. So I think I think there's something important there to consider for for those who are kind of interested in in teaching various things. And then towards the end here, I was thinking of like it's it's kind of the classical thing that we've gotten uh, questions about before. It's like what what could you do to improve your teaching or like like all of these types of, of questions regarding teaching. And I think uh, I think it's <clears throat> I think it's a hard question to answer because people do this in a very different way different ways. And I do think that a, a teaching situation is one where uh, it, it is a social situation in almost any any regard. And you need to become comfortable and um secure in in that role and i mean now we're just talking social psychology here but a lot of it is that because you need to be able to be in that state where you are reasonably relaxed and where you're able to convey your thoughts you're able to improvise a little bit in terms of you might get like a curveball and like different questions you didn't expect or someone who can barely like do a push-up or like hold their weight at all and you need to to accommodate to them when you when you're teaching there's there's all these kinds of different aspects to it that are that are important to uh, to consider so like becoming kind of like um calm and like confident and in that position is important but that is something that literally will take experience so it means that you can't be confident for the first x amount of hours that you do this you go you might be nervous you might be like uncomfortable or not knowing what to do and so on and i think that in general with teaching like is like taking on smaller chunks in the beginning so that you can 
can build that confidence without like without doing like a large workshop of 45 people as your first ever teaching experience like do some privates or teach some friends or like try it with someone you know or like just anything so that you get to experience how you yourself uh, explain this to other people and how they interpret and are able to to uh, uh, use and retain the, the the knowledge that you you share and i think if i wanted to teach something else like that i ha- that i rare that, that i don't teach obviously i would be in an, in a, in a good spot because i've taught other things but i would try immediately to to scale back kind of the um yeah again the size of the group or sim or those types of parameters just simply so that like okay this is new i don't really know what i'm doing i need i need to kind of test my footing here a bit before kind of heading into full combat of it so uh, i think that is that is a very like simple and and practical way of 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 approaching uh that and then of course like i mean knowing like like me creating yourself a structure like a lot of the time nowadays when i'm or like nowadays i'm not teaching anything because of covid <laughs> uh but uh, even even with with online students and so on like i i do have a structure i do have kind of like a uh, i have a framework that is quite solid and fixed and which is like reflected through what we do in Hanson Factory too. But when I work with people like one on one or like in group workshops and stuff, like I always uh, allow this to fluctuate a bit uh, simply because like I can't always necessarily know how things will will be and being able to um, like have a bit of smoother edges with that I think is, is important and uh, valuable. Um, and yeah, just the more comfortable you become with your own uh, teaching style and like your the way you word things and you start developing kind of your own vocabulary in a sense, like that doesn't mean you need to like make up new words to be able to, to teach, but like you, you get your own mannerisms and you're kind of, uh, you, you become kind of a, a character in, in a sense in your, in your teaching. And I think that is in general very helpful and something that also leads me into thinking that uh, this about approach that I said and this about um, the uh, be like the the specificities of how you as a person would teach like how I teach I know it's different from other people because I am someone I'm not them but uh, you 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 start kind of um, finding kind of your or like as you yes your voice gets clearer to yourself it gets clearer to others and uh i think this is something that i it took me a while to understand but like it's it's really it's really a lot about personalities and like the fact that some personalities click with other t- types of personalities and some not like i've had students that like they didn't really kind of get into the way I was teaching and I had to like either radically change it uh, for them so that they could they could take in what I, I wanted to to give them uh, or there could even be clashes because people would either not agree or like these things happen um, so but I think ultimately they it, it is good because it does give you um, uh, like then teaching becomes a way of expressing and you have um something that is essentially slightly different from from others uh and it's it's really not about like being unique for the sake of being unique it's more about <clears throat> having studied something solidly so that you know what you'd like to say about it and if you know what what you'd like to say about it it's highly likely that you're going to express that in a specific way because yeah you are not uh, a photocopy of of another person so uh i think that is also what <clears throat> what makes people interested in training with different teachers because they want to hear the different words they want to try the different cues they want to like experience how someone else's uh um how to say um yeah life has experienced like has gone through this process and i think this is very valuable and i highly recommend people to check out and like um train with with different people because it gives you it gives you uh, a wider understanding of of the fact that this isn't a one-dimensional practice as with 
all things really. Um, though, of course, there is also value in sticking with someone's methodology for a series of amount of time, so you can actually get to experience that. But um, I do think that there is value in yeah in in trying out uh different ways of thinking as long as as you're kind of rooted in in the from the idea that like we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here no one really is uh it is more about um yeah modalities it's more about words specific kind of expressions of how things feel which might be more fitting to one person than another uh, people having different anatomies and so on which i think is an, a, ver a very important thing in terms of being a teacher uh, which also i've seen it's one of the things that has kind of been one of my gripes with hand balancing is that it 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 has too often from what i've seen just been been kind of uh, you take one body and then you extrapolate uh, that onto everyone when it is blatantly clear from anatomy that like our bodies do not look the same on the insides, both mus muscularly and when it comes to our bone insertions and sizes and angles and all of this. So by definition, I think that we cannot really, um, due to that, we can't... Uh, say that there is a one specific type of placement that you could draw on the on the paper that would like by default be better for everyone it's it's kind of more uh depending on the person and i think that this is also something that uh i surely know that when i started out coaching and stuff i was much more rigid and specific I'm like yeah it needs to be like this and your arm like that and stuff like that and then suddenly, like some months down the line, like someone showed me a video of the completely the opposite, and like the person is much better than me, and I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a variation then, and maybe it's um, maybe it's up to preference, um, rather than this being some sort of like robotic uh, or like a robot production line facility where everyone needs to come out looking exactly the same which again also goes very much against the artistic side of of at least in the circus sense of things <laughs> which i find hilarious because the circus is also kind of enforcing that kind of cold onto people aka the federation as we've talked a lot about so yeah there's quite a lot of of different things into into teaching and my reasons for doing it but ultimately it's it's fun it's it's interesting to see is of course great to see when people's faces light up because, because like they got something they understood something it's great like i recognize the feeling and like it it brings kind of community it brings out like the ability to, for people to ultimately enjoy doing these things and i think that there is no real higher value than finding uh how to say joy in doing it for the sake of its its own um uh in the sake of for how to how now i'm just blah, 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 can't speak finding joy in doing something for the sake of just doing it i think that is something that gives you a lot of kind of fuel and driving force over time to keep it going regardless of, of like if you become the best of it or not uh like it's it's much more just about like yeah um uh, allowing yourself or allowing it to become a practice with which you kind of um basically have a good time and have a bad time and <laughs> experience yourself from a lot of different angles so um that is the end of my rambles because now i'm going to go and lift a bunch of shit here in turkey cheers the handstand cast was brought to you by handstand factory and is produced by motion impulse thanks for tuning in you can find a full transcript of each episode, along with the show notes and any relevant references on handstandfactory.com slash podcast. Thanks to Isaac for editing and Jordan for transcriptions. Music by Daniel Horwath. If you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com or consider starting one of our Handstand Factory online programs. Links are in the show notes. <laughs>